more analysis on this, let's speak with Terry Goldsworthy. He is Associate Professor of Criminal Justice and Criminology at Bond University. Professor Goldsworthy, uh, thank you so much uh, for speaking with us this morning. You know, two attacks in three days. One declared a mental health issue, the other a terrorism act. Uh, in your latest commentary, you said that cases of mass murder are shocking because they are relatively rare in Australia. How concerned are uh, authorities by the recent spate of attacks. Yeah, good morning. Look, I mean, mass murders in Australia are relatively rare, and by mass murder we're talking about where four more people are killed in a short time period at the same location or nearby geolocations. So we don't see too many of them in Australia. We did a study in terms of mass shootings that occurred between 1964 and 2014, and we identified 14 shootings in that period. So about once every four years, we have a mass event like this. In terms of stabbings, the last time we had a mass stabbing was in 2014, where a woman killed eight of her children. So, I mean, they are unusual, and that's why I guess they get so much exposure when they occur. Um, certainly they're concerning, but in general, uh, it is still, it's quite safe to be in public spaces in, in Australia. We just have these kind of aberrations that occur from time to time, which are unfortunate. And in the case of the Bondi Junction mall attack, police have said that uh, it is obvious that the killer had targeted women. You know, this has, of course, raised questions about the phenomenon of misogynistic ideology in Australia. Um, if you could tell us, you know, how common is this problem in the country and how can we avoid uh, the epidemic levels of violence against women? Yeah, look, I mean, the motivation of the Bondi stabber is still being determined to some degree. The police would have had access to the CCTV footage in terms of looking at who he targeted and how he targeted them. And there could be a number of explanations for that. We won't know what they are till they complete the investigation, but it could be that he was driven by the fact that he just didn't like women, or it could have been the fact that he thought perhaps women would be less able to resist his attacks, and hence the reason there was a practical aspect for him targeting them. In terms of uh, in the, in the personal violence against women in terms of domestic violence in Australia, we're actually at a 34-year low in, in terms of our homicide rate. So th this, I said, you know, I guess doesn't necessarily represent, uh, you know, an epidemic as we have seen some politicians call it. Our rates of interpersonal violence against female victimisation are extremely low in historical terms. Uh, but yes, there, there is an aspect of gender here that will need to be explained, and that's going to be part of the police investigation in terms of looking at why he uh, tipped over, how was his mental health a role in this, and what was his motivation in terms of picking that location, picking those victims. And they will all be part of the police process over the next months when they're interviewing, I suspect, hundreds of witnesses and uh, looking at his, at his recent history, his mental health engagements and what his family and associates can also tell investigators. Okay, so we know that the numbers are low at this point, but what is the root cause of this misogyny uh, ideology? What's triggering it? Well, look, I think uh, if you go back, um, you know, in terms of domestic violence, the reasons are quite complex, et cetera. You know, the event that occurred on Saturday was a stranger murder. So it wasn't in terms of a domestic homicide type event. And they are significantly different in terms of motivations, perhaps a stranger murder. So, you know, we really can't group them together. I mean, on one, on one side, you have people in a relationship who have a domestic violence type homicide. And then we have the strange murders, which is what the mass murder on Saturday was. And they're vastly mm -hmm. different criminal events. In terms of misogynistic uh, culture or whatever else, you know, I, I, I just take uh, some kind of disagreement to say that there's a toxic masculinity present in Australia as a culture. I don't think that's a new stance, or I don't think it's an answer to complex problems. Uh, and certainly, um, I think what you do see is some men who have extremely poor behavioural uh, responses in terms of how they deal with certain situations. So, you know, it's really a, a incident by incident uh, process. You know, if you look at uh, things like such as uh, filicide, which is the killing of children in Australia, the rate of men and women killing their children is equal. So there are really some uh, interesting uh, contrasts in terms of the different categories of homicide that you look at in determining uh, why these things occur. Mm.
Mm -hmm. So while, while there are still many questions about the recent Sydney attack, some investigations have concluded, some are still ongoing. What are authorities looking out for next and how can the nation really recover from these traumatic incidents? Well, look, the investigation will be looking at uh, how could this be prevented. Uh, it's going to be very difficult when you have a, a random act like this. There's no linkage between the offender and the victims that we're aware of at this stage. Um, so the motivation will be extremely important in determining why did he pick uh, this shopping centre, why did he pick those victims. So they're going to be looking at what can be done in terms of crime prevention. They'll also be looking at the response of the police in this uh, regard, the response of the shopping centre. So what the situation was on Saturday was an act of armed offender. Um, so the police training generally in relation to those matters now is that the police need to move into the situation and engage that active armed offender as soon as they can because the more time that offender has, the more freedom of movement the offender has, the more casualties there's going to be. So there's been a change in policy in probably the last 10 years in terms of how we deal with these armed engagements. Uh, it went from contain and negotiate to where you have someone like this individual who's moving around and attacking people, you need to go in. So the police will move past casualties, they will move past people who are panicking to go and engage the offender. Uh, in this case, it appears they did that quite effectively, but there'll be two separate investigations here. One will be in relation to the mass murder, and the other investigation will be in relation to the use of police force uh, and lethal force. So I don't see many problems in terms of the use of the lethal force, but nonetheless, that'll have to be done. And they will all go to the coroner for an examination as to what was done well, what could be improved, and how we try to uh, prevent these incidents from occurring. But you would have seen some of the CCTV footage, the shop owners closing doors, taking people in, things like that. They are how we respond to active armed offenders and lockdowns, et cetera. So uh, that, at least that will give us some hope that you know, if these events occur, we can actually take some action other than law enforcement personnel to limit the amount of harm these people can do when they go out and engage in this way. Professor Goldsworthy, thank you so much for speaking with us. That was Terry Goldsworthy, Associate Professor of Criminal Justice and Criminology from Bond University.